I'm going to exercise the chair for just a second for one last question, and this is your opportunity to recruit. Um, <coughs> your agencies do cutting-edge research on every technology you could imagine, from classic spy craft like disguising to communications technology that would blow James Bond and Q branch away. What pitch would you make to those in school now, or perhaps those working in tech and looking to serve a greater purpose, that they should come apply their engineering degrees, coding skills, and creativity, and work in the IC? Director Ray. I would say there is nothing more rewarding than protecting the American people. Uh, and we've seen with some of our smartest high-tech folks, I can think of one office in particular where two of our brightest stars with great talent briefly left for what they thought would be greener pastures in the private sector, and I was very pleased to see them both independently come back only about eight months later when they realized the grass was browner. If, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I would have probably asked you for a, to release the tape of what you just said in terms of really how innovative and how creative and the opportunities uh, that the folks in the IC get, in, get a chance to engage in far strip anything that you see in a Hollywood movie. And the other thing that I would add to that is imagine when you get up every morning that your task, your responsibility is to defend the hopes and dreams of 320 million Americans. And that's something that we relish the opportunity to do that every single day. And people would want to join that team. Mr. Chairman, our mission sells itself when we talk to our people. Uh, I would offer, as, as we talk to young people, at the National Security Agency, I saw big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud computing, and places like Baghdad and Kabul in support of our forces long before we ever called it that. That's the, the selling point that, that we emphasize to our, our people, because if it's cutting edge, uh, we will be doing it at the National Security Agency. Robert? Mr. Chairman, we're proud of the... Abil our ability to recruit some of the talent you just described. Um, we don't do it often on fiscal terms. We do it on psychic terms. And so serving something greater than oneself uh, for a cause uh, to protect the nation and our interests uh, is one that both attracts and retains the lifeblood of our agency, which is our people. Director Haspel, you want to take a shot at uh, selling something that not many people know about? <laughs> Well, like my colleagues, CIA officers uh, come to Langley for the mission, and they stay because of the mission, and it's really about being something, part of something that's bigger than yourself. And in terms of advanced technologies, it's a chance to be on the cutting edge and make a difference. Well, let me just conclude by saying the disciplines that come out of higher education and, and, and community colleges today, all of those disciplines are applicable to the agencies that sit before us today. There, there, there should be no student that doesn't look at this as a way to apply what they've learned or the degree that they have. Uh, that didn't used to be the case. It was all specialized, but now it applies to everything. Director Well, Ms. Chairman, as, as someone of an older generation here who uh, has to turn to his grandson to get the TV uh, uh, on the right channel, um, I'm continually amazed as I get around the country talking to uh, colleges and graduates and, and, and people that are uh, in these STEM uh, positions and studying of their incredible talent. Um, uh, they bring those kind of talents uh, and skills uh, to our agencies, as you have heard, and it is uh, extremely rewarding to see the young people who know they could have a better financial deal, a more settled lifestyle, easier and so forth and so on. They want to serve this country, uh, and they see this as meaningful, and it exceeds what financial uh, gains they could get on the outside, uh, and plus they're, they're able to do some really cool stuff <laughs> in all of these agencies, which we can't talk about here, but it is, a tr it is attractive to it, but their commitment to the country and commitment to the mission, uh, as has been demonstrated here, is, is pretty, is awfully rewarding when you go out and see what these young people have and what they're willing to do for the country. I thank all of you, Vice Chairman. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I, I agree that the, the people who work with all of you are extraordinarily special Americans. <clears throat> and the mission is critically important. I would personally add one other item. 
that if they work for the United States government, they actually ought to be paid on time? And I question, I've, I've seen the number of federal employees who've gone five weeks plus without pay. I'm not sure many folks in the private sector would show up five weeks plus without pay on an ongoing basis. And while I'm appreciative of the fact that particularly the FBI, that your agents will be reimbursed, I do worry. The FBI has a number of contractors. Under our current setting, uh, they will come out of this um, five week plus 35 day shutdown with nothing to show. And in, if we cannot guarantee that people that work for the United States government uh, are going to be not used as hostages for either side of the political debate, then I think our ability to recruit and retain it will go down dramatically. Uh, I don't know if, Director Ray, if you want to make any comment on that or maybe just punt, but uh, it is something I've, I saw FBI agents, I saw Homeland Security agents, I saw air traffic controllers working double shifts and then going and driving an Uber. I'm not sure I want somebody showing up uh, maintaining the safety of our, of our airway with uh, four hours of sleep. Um, but I'd be happy to take a comment there. Oh, well, Mr. Vice Chairman, uh, needless to say, uh, we're still assessing the overall operational impact of the shutdown, but uh, what's quite clear is that it was incredibly negative and painful for the 37,000 men and women of the FBI and their families. Uh, but I will also say that I could not be more proud of their professionalism and their dedication to not let balls drop, but to keep charging ahead uh, across all of our various program areas during that time. Certainly, when you talk about contractors, we are very dependent, just like every government agency, uh, on contractors for a whole range of services. Um, and, you know, we would want to make sure that that aspect of our operations doesn't get uh, disrupted. And my hope would be that folks on both sides, the aisle, will look at how we might make sure, particularly some of those low-priced contractors, oftentimes the folks who clean the bathrooms or serve the food, uh, don't have to come out of this 35-day shutdown with absolutely no compensation at all.